Welcome to Courtside Moms. I'm your host, Wendy Sparks. So I first want to start off with Happy New Year, everybody. I'm so happy to be back and bringing you all some fun and awesome, awesome episodes. As I'm a magic mom, I thought it would be fitting to start the year with another magic mom. As a matter of fact, we're going to do a magic mom month. And we're starting with the awesome Renee Okiki, who was the mother of Chuma Okiki. Let's welcome Renee Okiki to the show. Hey, Renee. Hey, Wendy. What's good? Thank you so much for coming on Courtside Moms. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak to us about Chuma and his road to the NBA. You're very welcome. <laughs> Glad to be here. So where was Chuma raised and what inspired him to play basketball? Chuma was raised in Atlanta, Georgia, specifically College Park. And um, when his brother was five years old, uh, he played rec ball. And uh, Chuma was two at the time. So every year they would go into the gym and play rec ball. So by the time Chuma got to be four, he wanted to play organized ball like his brother. But the uh, cutoff was five years old. So I talked to the director of the gym, and I said, hey, you know he's been here every year with his brother. He knows how to dribble. He knows how to play. Why don't you let me register him? He said, okay, Miss Okiki, he can play. And that was just the beginning of everything. He couldn't <laughs> stop playing after that, basically. So that was four. Wow. He just loved the game. Mm-hmm. Were your boys competitive at home? Uh, very competitive, but they were also, um, they were also united, you know, they would, if they didn't have anybody to play with, they knew they could play with each other. Right. You know, so that was a good thing. Of course. Of course. Mm -hmm. So let's move a little bit forward to high school. He played at Westlake in Atlanta. Right. What was that like for you to watch him play basketball in high school? I always enjoyed watching my children play, you know, because I knew that they were getting a a lesson in so many different things, you know, teamwork, discipline, respect, you know. So when he played at Westlake, I was really overjoyed only because when he was playing at the rec center, Westlake's head coach had a summer camp and um, he had registered to play in that summer camp. This was was before AAU basketball. And uh, he walked out with all the awards at age eight, all the T-shirts, the trophies, the <laughs> everything. And I was like, Wow. So fast forward, now at Westlake, that's his coach, Coach Rogers. Oh, okay. Yep. So he had the ballers camp when Chuma was a little boy, seven years old, eight years old. Chuma walked away with all the awards. And then he ends up back at Westlake because he transferred from Langston Hughes High School, which was a good school too. You know, it's pretty new. But uh, at Westlake, just the ideal of him going to Westlake and, and playing for Coach Rogers, who, who was a real, he's an excellent coach, excellent mentor, a Christian, you know? Yeah. He knows how to motivate and direct, you know, his, his, uh, his team. And anybody in that school, all the kids in the school, they all respected him, you know? So I, I was elated for him to go back to Westlake. And the goal was to walk away with a state championship, which they did. Which they did. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? At that time, I realized, well, I realized that before that. And I told him, I said, this is building a resume. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to play college ball, you've got to build your resume. So Absolutely. this is one, one of so many things that you could put on your resume. And so the colleges that are coming to recruit you, they're going to know that you won a state championship. You won the Peach Bowl. You know, you you. You've had all these accomplishments. So, 
Well, he was Mr. Georgia because before he became Mr. Georgia. <laughs> exactly. 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 Well, he was highly recruited and sought after by many uh, colleges, over 50, Georgia, Mississippi State, um, to, to name a few. Auburn was your final choice, though. Like, why? Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm from New Jersey, okay? So I wanted him to go up north to college, you know? I wanted him to go to some of the, the D1 universities in New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, Philly, you know? So when Auburn came calling, my first impression was, no, I'm not sending my son to Alabama <laughs> to play basketball. Yeah. You know, I just, you know, I'm a northerner. But when I met Bruce Pearl, I kind of opened up because I said, you know what? He's a northerner. We got something in common yeah. here. He knows what I know. Yeah. You know, and, and, and he's a good guy, you know, and, and I just, I love Bruce Pearl. I love him, love him, love him. And so I started thinking, you know, Auburn's really not that far away. It's only an hour and a half. You know, if he was to go to school up north, I wouldn't be able to attend his games and everything. Yeah. But uh, so so that's one of the reasons why, you know, Auburn's an excellent university. I love Bruce Pearl and the distance. The short drive was just just really I, I just I couldn't think of anything else, a better place for him to go. Well, know. that gave you the opportunity to um, to attend um, a lot of the games. We attended, we attended every home game, wow. you know, and sometimes wow. we'll be tired, the game, <laughs> you know, over at 10 o'clock, we didn't make it home till 11, 12 o'clock. I was like, oh my God, but, but it was worth it. And, and Auburn has a lot of energy. You know, I didn't realize all that was going on at Auburn. You know, the, the togetherness, the, 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 the whole student, you know, atmosphere, it's it's really really a good college, you know. It'll make you want to go to college. It'll make you do good, right. you know. So I, I just and Chula, you know, he he learned a lot. You know, I looked at him after he had left Auburn, and I said, "Oh, so you didn't just play basketball? So you actually learned something at all? <laughs> you, yay! You went to class. Oh, <laughs> uh, went to class. He learned. He had to go to class. Now there was no, uh, you know, avoiding that. But they gave yeah. him." The, all the academic support that he needed, right. you know, and, and I love that about Auburn, you know, and, and they do that with all their athletes. They don't just let them go and then sail in the wind and then slowly work them way into uh, academic suspension or, or right. probation. They really support their athletes because, and this is, this is my, my issue during recruiting, one of the questions I asked colleges that we visited, what kind of support do you give your athletes? Because athletes, you know, going to school, they're not a regular student, right. okay? Being a student athlete, they go above and beyond. They're traveling. They need extra help. Yeah. What do you have in place for them? You know, because regular students, they go to class from 8 to 12, and then they go and study. Yeah. And the rest of the time is theirs. But not these athletes. They're traveling, not getting back to, on campus till late Sunday night or whatever, or, yeah. or late Monday night. It's just, you know, so Auburn, they, they convinced me that they had a, a program in place where they could support the, their athletes academically, you right. know? And uh, so that's another thing that got me, that convinced me that Auburn was the good, was the right place for Chua. Well, of course, because as a parent, your first thing is graduate. Is graduating exactly. is your child getting that education and being able to graduate at the end of the road, right? Whereas for our kids, they just want to play. They don't understand or exactly. really care about anything else other than you know what I mean, playing NCAA and then and then trying to live their dream by moving forward and getting to the league. But you need that degree to fall back on at one point. So you're absolutely right. As a parent, you have to ask these questions because if you don't, no one else is going to. But you know what? I was really appalled 
uh, certain coaches told me, D1 coaches, oh, they got to get that on their own. Yeah. Oh, they got to do this. Oh, they got to, you know, and I was thinking, scratch you off the list. Yeah. Because it seems like you're, you, you, you don't, you're not there for the student right. and the athlete. Yeah. You're just trying to achieve your own objectives. And so now we can't, I'm, you know, some local school said that. You know, I would have loved him for him to go to Atlanta and Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But with that type of attitude, I said, no, uh-uh. They're setting you up for failure. Yeah. They're going to use you, and they're going to kick you to the curb. And so we're, we're not going to let that happen. But you know no. what, Renee? It's awesome that you as a mom that you recognize that because there's a lot of parents that just don't, or they just don't have the time, or they just don't care, or whatever the situation yeah. is, right? they just like, oh, you're, you got that scholarship. That's great. Go. You've got that free education, just go on with your business. But it's like, what does he get out of it in the end, right? And you can ask a lot of parents, and they're clueless. They have no idea. Exactly. You know, you know what I mean? Is your child going to class? I don't know. What is your child doing there? Oh, he plays basketball. I know. But what program is he in? And a lot of them can't tell you. They're like, I don't know. Exactly. And and the, those instructors at those big universities, they don't care if you're an athlete, you represent yeah. in school. No, they're still going to fail you. Yeah. Regardless, they don't care if you, you've been traveling for four days and you just got back and you're a little behind and everything and you need yeah. some extra help. They they don't care. Yeah. Some do, but not, not all of them. Well, in my son's case, where he was considered an international student coming from Canada, some of the classes he actually had to attend. So there was no yep. pretending. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> but you got six classes. You got to show up to four. Like they want to see your face. You know what I mean? See? So, and, and that's, you know what, to me, that's what it should be because at the end of the day, it's teaching them how to grind. It's teaching them, you know what I mean, to be right. to be ready for life. I mean, we as parents, we get up, we go to work, we look after our kids. There's no breaks. Nope. You know what I mean? So you shouldn't have a break just because you have a basketball game to play and you're tired. Like, you know, I'm tired when I go to work right. and I come home. You know what I mean? So it's good. So to me, it was, it's, it was like a learning process. Definitely. You know what I mean? So I was, yes. I, I, it, it's a blessing, you know what I mean, when you find that yeah. right school. So at the end of his sophomore year, during the Sweet 16, he unfortunately <laughs> tore his ACL. It seemed truly emotional for the players and the coaches. But tell yeah. me, as mom, when you saw him go down from that injury, like what was running through your mind? And were you actually there? I, I was there. In fact, I really wasn't going to go to that game. You know, I was convinced mm -hmm. to go. And uh, so I'm glad I did go. Yeah. But when he went down, you know, I was concerned when he didn't get up. Yeah. You know, but, I, you know, I, I've been watching sports for a long time. You know, my brothers played sports. I, I knew that, you know, he could get hurt, basically. Yeah. And he played football. He ran track. You know, so that was always in the back of my mind, you know, that he could always, he could always get injured. Yeah. You know, so when he went down, I said, oh, boy, here we go. You know, but when he got up, I was encouraged, you know. I, I wasn't I wasn't afraid. I just felt like I hope this doesn't destroy his dreams. Right. You know, I hope, you know, he could he can move on. Right. It's not that bad, you know. And you know, ACL it, and I told him, I said, look, man, it's just a setback. Just your ACL. I know you can't go like you want to go, but, you know, this too shall pass, praise the Lord. You know what I'm saying? And we're going to beat this. God's yeah, got you, man. That's right. So don't worry about it. You just It's just a little setback, and, and you'll you'll be okay, you know. And he understands that. He's a Christian. Yeah. You know, he, he, he you know, it's just that, uh, you know, he was on top of his game, you yeah. know. And uh, Bruce Pearl just... I just had to laugh because uh, afterwards I, I chuckled to myself. You know, Bruce Pearl looked me in the eye and said, it's the devil that did it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's funny. I said, but we'll, we'll get past that. So it'll, yeah. it'll be good. It'll be okay. Well, he had a very successful surgery. Surgery. 
but yes. he immediately declared um, for the draft. So mm-hmm. walk me through that process. Um, like who decided that this is the time for you, even during your injury, to um, to declare? Like you know what I mean? Like was he was he afraid, for example, that if I stay another year at Auburn, like I won't have my chances at a professional career? Or like what was the mindset and the decision with your family to for him to move on? You know, we all discussed it, but at the end of the day, well, first of all, let me tell you, Chuma, Chuma only wanted to play basketball. He didn't want to go to college. He didn't want to take classes. <laughs> he just wanted <laughs> to play basketball. But Auburn was so nice that he enjoyed his two years at Auburn. You know, he really did. So Bruce Pearl said, hey, man, he said, go, go on and, and go ahead, you know. He had told him that he's going to put his name in the draft. Mm-hmm. And Bruce Pearl said, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Because, you know what, go on and get healed. You know, put your name in the draft, rehab, and then see what happens. Right. And then, you know, his agent, who I love, you know, Richie Beta with CAA, you know, he, he started working his magic. And the good thing about CAA, it's not just one agent. Yes. You know, they work as a team. Oh, yeah. So if Richie doesn't have a relationship with Orlando, somebody at CAA That's right. could step up and do the talking, you know, yeah. with the sales pitch and everything else. I feel you. you. Know? We're CAA, too. So. All right. See, see. Yeah. Uh, I know yeah. Richie told me. Richie yeah. told me. That's one of the reasons why I agreed to the interview. I said, okay, okay so she's part of the family. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-huh. So you Both know what ways. I'm talking about. Agency yep. and Magic Mom. Look at us. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Double. That's right. Double whammy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, that, that's that's kind of, you know, he, he had Bruce Pearl's blessing, you know, and he knew that he wanted to be an NBA professional. You know, Absolutely. he wanted to put his name in the draft. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So how does one prepare for a draft while injured? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just... Because he couldn't work out for the basketball teams, right? So Uh, how do you prepare? uh, Well, and that's where the agency comes in. Amen. You know, they they hustled. They, you know, sent him to a a bunch of doctors, had his hootie from his tootie checked out, examined, (laughs) and all this other stuff just to find out what was going on with Shuma. But... uh, it seemed like at every corner, every junction, I was caught off guard with the plan that CAA had. You know, Renee, they're going to have summer ball. Okay, Chuma's not going to be in summer ball. Or they're going to have the, um, the uh, um, where they would go and meet the teams and do the, I forgot the name of it. But, uh, you know, every player goes to California. They have like oh. a little... Um, I don't want to say convention, but it's a, it's a, um, eh. but anyway, at that, everybody goes to it because now they have an opportunity to display their talents in front of all the NBA teams Mm -hmm. and everybody goes. And so they were debating whether or not Chuma should go. And so when they told me, Hey, he's going to go and he's just going to go and shake hands to, you know, some of the teams, owners or coaches or whatever. And I said, okay. And then the next day they said, he's not going to go. You know, we don't want him to go. We just want him to, you know, just go to each team that's interested in him, visit and interview with them. So needless to say, about twice a week, he was traveling all over the country meeting with teams. They were open to that, you know, yeah. so they felt like, uh, OK, yeah, he doesn't have to be there. You know, just just come to to our location and we'll sit and talk. So come to Utah, come to New York, come to Connecticut. And he was just flying everywhere. Come mm-hmm. to Philly. You know, we just want to see him and talk to him. And basically he's he met with him. He talked to him. And uh, so, you know, because they understood his situation and they were willing to make allowances. So I was like, wow, that's a good thing. 
they don't need to see him play anymore. They were like, no, we know what he can do. We know we, right. what he's capable of. Yeah. You know, well, so. Well, they saw his potential. Yep. They so understood it, who he was, right? Yep. And I, I believe going back to CAA, the team over there, you know, they 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 work their ma- magic, if I could use that word. <laughs> <laughs> so as a mom, I mean, you had CAA in your corner and they were mm-hmm. directing you what to do. Did you feel like you had no choice but to put your 100% trust in them? Or did you have like another resource that was telling you, yes, Renee, this is good, or no, Renee, you shouldn't? Well, CAA, they, they always kept me updated on everything yeah. that was going on behind the scenes. Yeah. But they also always asked me, where do you want him to play? You know, yeah. what's your ideal place for him? And I told him, I said, look, my dad is still in New Jersey, South Jersey. So Philly would be wonderful. And mom's in Orlando. So Orlando magic would be perfect. Because I love Orlando's weather too. <laughs> And so when he, when the agent, you know, the agent told me that, uh, he told me that CAA uh, always says that he can't keep a secret, you know? So when he found out that Tim was going to Orlando, he wouldn't tell me, but he kept, I say, antagonizing me, lead me on. Oh, Renee, you're going to be so happy. You're going to be so happy. You're going to be so happy with <laughs> And you find out where he's going, oh, you're going to be so happy. And I thought, okay, it's going to be either Orlando or Philadelphia or <laughs> where could it be? You know, oh, I, I, I want to tell you, but I can't tell you because they say I talk too much. I can't talk to you. I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Mm, that's I said, okay. Oh, okay. Don't, I, I can wait. You know, I'm a patient person. You know, God is good. I know he's got us. You know, so when they. Oh, that said, would drive me crazy. Oh, oh, no. I'd be calling that man every day. <laughs> oh, no. No, oh, no, no, no. You can't tell me you know. <laughs> nope, nope. You can't tell me you know something and then you're not going to tell me. Like, what? Oh, no, we're fine. Uh, <laughs> get him in the corner, huh? Yeah, that's you, what? Yeah, yeah. And I'm closing the door. Yeah, I'm closing the door. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, see, Richie, yeah, see, you, see, Richie, yeah, he, he, he would, yeah, I think you might, you know, break him. You know, yeah. he might break Because he really wants to tell you. He wanted to tell you. Yeah, I would and, really want to know. But I didn't know. want to, uh, I didn't want to get him in trouble, you know. Yeah. I, I could have worked on him, but I said, no, I'll just let you, I'm let you keep your secret. Because I so, know it's going to be good, whatever it is. <laughs> you know? Yeah, amen. Either way, it's a good situation for your son and yeah. your family, right? Definitely. So take me to draft night. Did you guys attend the draft or did you do like a private event? I don't know, at home or with family, friends? Like, what did you do? You know, we, um, Chuma, you know, Richie wanted us to come to New York, you know. And I wanted to come to New York, too, but Chuma didn't want to come to New York. He, he, he wasn't sure where he was going to be drafted. Yeah. He had no idea because this situation was such a unique situation. Yeah. So he said, I don't want to go to New York, you know. I just want to do it here. And he told me that, like, the day before the draft. And I'm like, are you sure? I said, okay. So so now I got to run around and plan something at the house. And I think we had about 40 people in the house. Every, wow. you know, I told some people, family and friends, but I think the whole subdivision came out <laughs> to the house, you know. So I had to hurry up, go buy food and everything, you know. And it, it worked out really, really good, you know, for everyone to you know, be around the kitchen table, watching the television, you know, waiting, waiting, waiting. And then unexpectedly, you know, Orlando picked him. And I was like, what? Yeah. His AAU coach had came by, you know, he, he waited for a little while, but he left, right? Thinking that, oh, they probably won't get him till 30, 35, whatever. So in his car, he said, he was driving and heard it, or someone called him, and he said, "What? Chuma got 16 jab tank." He said, "Turn that car around." <laughs> he came back and said, "Chuma, congratulations!" Wow. But I told him, "Oh, ye of little faith, you know what I'm saying? How are you gonna not? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
hang around to the end and you just, you know, but I was like, okay, you just, you just missed the excitement because once they announced that and we were all in the uproar, girl, I got some, I had some fireworks, some <laughs> rockets. We went out in the back under my pergola and we just lit those things and the sky just blew up with rainbow oh colors, blast, blue, red, you know, and oh, we just amazing. had a good time with that. That's amazing. But, yeah, well, so we, we were happy. We so were happy. you were home watching it. Right. And the organization always calls. So I don't know how it is when the player's not at the draft. Do they call you first and, you know what I mean, before it's announced and you already know? Or did you guys find that on the TV and then they called you after? They called us, I think, right before. I think they called us the 15th draft yeah. pick. Yeah. You know? Like, you're next. <laughs> uh, Richie's like... You know, uh, I guess he couldn't hold it in any longer. Well, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I, I believe, yeah, that's what he's, he said, that uh, he's going to Orlando. Orlando's going to pick him. And I'm like, wow. Okay, so they call the agent. Well, you know what? I don't know. Did he? Like, how yeah, do you he answer did. that he call? Me right before. Right like, you before. know what I mean? How do you answer that call? Hi, is Chuma there? <laughs> uh uh, uh, uh. Uh, is Betty from the NBA? Yeah. yeah, you're 16th, you're next. Okay, thanks, bye. Like, how does that happen? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like. You know, I, I think that, I think I learned the same time that little boy uh, had learned when he announced it. Who was that? Uh, <laughs> whose brother was that? I learned around that same time. The same time they told him, they told me. Wow, that's great, though. Isaac's brother. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. But it was good. Uh, you know, and I didn't really need to know ahead of time. You know, right. I, I like the element of surprise. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I mean, it was such a blessing because here, here your son went, you know what I mean, higher than than you anticipated. Definitely. And, was. you know what I mean, it must have been like a shock for him, especially with him not wanting to be there. You know what I mean? That, that unknown. I mean, it's unknown for everybody pretty much, right? I mean, because right. he was a lottery pick at the beginning. You know what I mean? Right. And then he gets injured. So at one point you're like, well, what do I do? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. So that fear, you know what I mean? So. But you know such- what? I, I was never fear. I was never afraid. I, I, I just knew that things would work out for him mm-hmm. because he's such a good person. Yeah. He's such a humble guy. You know, I just felt like his blessings was coming regardless yeah. of where he is. So I, I really wasn't worried about it because I knew God was going to bless him. Yeah. I knew that. You know, yeah. so I, I just, you know, I will not worry about it too much. Yeah. I, just, uh, I mean, when my son um, in 2014, he went undrafted ooh. and we were in New York, but we, we were at a hotel. You know, right. and, and I was saying to him, you know, it's it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It's just not happening tonight. Exactly. You know what I mean? So you have to keep that. You know what I mean? I have to remind him of his value and stuff. It doesn't mean that you're not a great player. Right. You know what I mean? You're just not going to the NBA right now. Exactly. You know what I mean? And look, a couple of years later, I mean, look, I'm talking to you as a magic mom. You know what I mean? Our kids are playing yes. together. So like you said, it's all about keeping faith. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But you know, they're so young. Yeah. They, they have to learn those lessons. They have to go through it yeah. to learn those lessons. Yeah. You know, yeah. me and you, we see it. Yeah. You know, we, we've been there, done that. We know the ups and downs of life, you know, yeah. and the only thing we could do is just tell them, you and know, support. Hey. All we can exactly. do is support as mothers, right? You know what I mean? As parents. Exactly. It's all we can tell them what we think is going to happen or just, you know what I mean? Try to and keep them encouraged. Right. Yeah. And, and my son, of course, I mean, now he's, you know, he went overseas, he went G League, he did he did all the circuits right now, you know what I mean? Right. And you know what I mean? His his path, he wouldn't change it now. Exactly. I mean, he's blessed he's to have all the, a lot. That's right. He's blessed to have all those opportunities that he had. You know what I mean? So so with Chuma, he um he was given time to rehabilitate. So he signed to Lakeland Magic, actually, which is the Orlando Magic G League team, to all those who don't know. So he was signed to them for a year, but he actually never played with them. And then moving forward, November 2020, he finally signed his first rookie contract. (laughs) 
I can only imagine for him that was long time coming, eh? <laughs> you know? Yes. Were you there with him when he signed his contract? I was in Orlando, but I could not be at his side because mm-hmm. of the coronavirus. So right. we had to zoom it. They they zoomed us in. Yeah. You know, so and then uh, we celebrated that evening, you know, what balloons, you know, firecrackers, stuff like that. And so, you know, so and I understand with the coronavirus, I think the only people that there was was Jeff Chuma and the, the coach. And a couple of technical people to and set up it. the Zoom. That that was it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there wasn't anybody else. So, you know, I told myself, well, this is this is what we have to do, and that's just fine. We're gonna go with the program. Absolutely. You know? So, mm-hmm. you know, when you're looking at your son's sign, like what conversation do you have after with him? Like now, now you're an NBA player. You know what I mean? You're just looking at your son differently. Or, I mean, he's still Chuma, but what I'm saying is, like, now your baby's an NBA player. Like, what's the first conversation that you guys had after that? Well, you know, I told him congratulations. I told him I'm so proud of you, you know. And he understood that the struggle was real and it paid off. Yeah. You know, don't take anything for granted. You know, and uh, keep working hard. Yeah. You know, keep working hard. It's not over yet. You know. Yeah. You gotta still prove yourself on the court. Absolutely. You know, because this this is a different game. Yeah. It's you know? a different level. So, yes. Yeah. So he 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 understood. You know, he understood. So it's good. Well, your son was coming from the mag. I mean, the Lakeland Magic, and my son when he signed his contract, he was coming from Greece. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? He was coming from overseas, you know what I mean? And I re- and I was in Montreal at home. And right. he was in Orlando and, and he called me once he signs, you know what I mean? And for us it was like, okay, let's you know be grateful. Yeah. You finally got this opportunity. And he was so humbled. Like he was so like he was in shock for for like the entire conversation, he's like, Mom, I'm I'm here. Like I did it. Like I can't believe it. You know what uh-huh. I mean? And for me, it was just like, you're gonna be good. You know, you're great. You deserve it. You know what I mean? You 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 work so hard and I'm so proud of you. And I hung up that phone and cried like a baby. <laughs> Thank you. Lana. I did, I did. I thanked the Lord. I was on my tears knees. I'm telling you, yeah, it was tears of joy. My mascara was running. I was like <laughs> crying for <laughs> hours because I was thinking of all, you know what I mean, everything in the path. I was thinking, you know what I mean, him being overseas and, you know what I mean, going from Turkey to Greece. And I was thinking before that he was playing um, um, in South Dakota for the G League. And before that, you know, being undrafted and just like, where do I go? What do I do? And, you know what I mean, you have that feeling of I'm not good enough. And, you know what I mean, as a parent, you have to support them and make them realize that you are good enough. And that was tough. So yeah. for me, it was like, wow, finally you're there. You got to keep yourself there. But at least you, you know what I mean? Your talent that you've, you know what I mean? How you've been playing has got you there. Now you got to make sure that you're doing what you got to do to remain there. But thank God that you're at where you're at. So it was, it was quite a blessing, which is why I was asking you, like, what was the conversation? Because I just wanted to hear the two and compare the two, right? <laughs> exactly. And, and you know, they, uh, uh, you know, Chuma had uh, visited Greece when he was at Auburn, that was their their trip. Yeah. So they they have something to come. They they have something. Your son yeah. and my son have something <laughs> they can talk about. You know. But uh, but yeah, I think it, it. I think it's it was good for you to keep your son encouraged like that because I'm sure that was not easy, and I'm sure you had a whole lot of convincing to do. Yeah. And I'm sure that you probably had to knock a whole lot of negativity down. Yeah. You know, that will come into his mind sometimes, probably at every junction, you know, from the G League to to the different countries that he played in. And so I could only imagine you were his rock for sure. You know? Absolutely. And I think what was tough was um, for them, you have a lot of people coming at them. Yep. 
And you know what I mean? You you have this one person who has like 20 people coming at them at once. And they're saying, don't worry, you're going to be great. You're going to make the league. And you know what I mean? For them, they want instant gratification. They want it now. Well, my friend exactly. says I'm great. You know, he watches basketball so he knows and he says. And it's like, who cares what your friend says? You know what I mean? But they hear all that beautifulness from all the, from everybody around them. And yet they wake up and they're like, I'm still not in the league. So you know, that was uh, tough. It, it, it was tough. And it's funny, too, because uh, Chung was hearing all that stuff from all different areas also. But I told him the same thing I tell my kids from when they were in kindergarten. And I tell them, little Johnny don't know nothing. I'm <laughs> your mother. I know better than little Johnny in your fifth grade class or whatever. You know, and I, and I keep telling them that, you know, even today when they come to me and say, well, such and such said, forget such and such. I know better. Well, yeah. you know what the experts say. These are just people talking yeah. who knows nothing. Yeah. Who knows nothing. Yeah. So follow my lead and forget about what the naysayers say, you know, because, you know. I remember one of my son's friends said, well, I know the commissioner. I'll never forget that. And I'm like, well, then call him right now and tell him that he needs to be on a team. I'll wait. I remember that conversation. And all of a sudden, he just switched up. Like, stop telling my son all this nonsense. You know what I mean? Stop exactly. telling all these players in the gym that you know the commissioner and you know all these coaches and you know, like, really? And I said to him, you're a basketball player. I don't see you on a team. Exactly. So I would tell him. the reality them. is they yeah. know nothing. Nothing. No, no, no. Like, 2K is not the same as real basketball. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> And that's all they know. And yeah, they yeah. probably didn't even play a uh, uh, rec ball or whatever. Or maybe that's the only thing they played. But I just. Not I even. Just, but anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Chuba did not play for over a year and a half since Auburn. Almost was two he, years. Yes. So was he nervous when he finally got his opportunity to play his first NBA game? Uh, yeah, he he was nervous, you know. But uh, because I think it really didn't hit home with him until he like he said that uh, when he was in a locker room and they gave him his shirt, his jersey. And that's when he was like, wow, I finally made it. You know, I am an NBA player. And so, of course, when he walks out on the court, now he's a little nervous. You know, I think he (laughs) felt like twice or something in the <laughs> first five minutes or whatever. <laughs> he was nervous. And I said, eh, it's just nerves, you know. You know, and I told him, I said, you're going to be nervous, you know, in the beginning. You know, but you were nervous when you played college ball and you first went out there. Absolutely. You know, he's going to be nervous regardless. Exactly. It's a different platform. You know? Of course. Yeah. Of course. But, but what I always tell him or remind him, just play your game, man. Just yeah. play your game. Yeah. You know? Listen to the coaches, because that, that's his game. He, he, Choma has always been the player that listens to the coaches. And when the coaches say, go out there and do A, B, C, D, he goes out there exactly and does A, B, C, D. He don't bring any baggage on the court. He does exactly what the coaches tell him. Yeah. And that's why they always loved him so much, because he's so coachable. Yeah. So... You know, and that's why I told him, I said, just play your game. You listen to the coaches and you get out there and you do what they tell tell you to do. And you'll be okay. Absolutely. I mean, every player has a role. Exactly. So you just have to understand what you're there to do. You know what I mean? What you're paid to do and go out mm-hmm. there and do it. I mean, at the end of the day, the coaches, you know what I mean? They they set these plays. You know what I mean? Right. To move, you know I mean, to move the team forward. The whole point is to win the game. You know exactly. what I mean? So they have to trust in the coaches and just say, okay, you know, what is it you need? And I think every coach will appreciate that type of player who will listen and say, okay, like, what do I got to do? Like, what do you need me to do? And just play. Exactly. Exactly. Well, right now, due to the pandemic, about 3,000 fans are permitted to watch home games at the Amway Center. Have you had the opportunity yet to, to um, watch him play live there? Yeah, we did go to one of the games, and uh, I think they had expected. Well, it was, I don't think there was three thousand. I think they expected three thousand and about yeah. twenty five hundred or something that came out that right. game. But um, but you know, uh, you know, some somebody might hate me for saying this, you know, but um, I, I like an empty gym. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the gym. 
you know, I like that people spread out. You don't have to wait in line for the, to go to the bathroom. You don't yeah. have to wait in line at the concession stand. Yeah. You know, uh, nobody's right behind you, hitting your back or whatever. I just, uh, you know, I do miss the excitement yeah. that comes with being at the game and everything. Yeah. But it also has a, a kind of peaceful aspect to it, you know, where True. the thick crowds aren't there anymore. Yeah. You know, but uh, I'm all for um, uh, coronavirus, you know, mask wearing. Yeah. You know, all the things that we need to do. I'm all for that. But I do look forward to the crowds coming back into the arena, yeah. hearing the roar, hearing the cheers, hearing all that, you know. Yeah. But uh, I'm not used to it. I mean, I'm not used to, oh, I haven't been, right? I haven't been to a game yet. So, I mean, talking got- about... No, I'm talking about I haven't been in the game since the pandemic. So, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm used to when the Amway Center was full and the games were, like, wild. And, like you said, you're running right. to the bathroom. And during halftime, we're running to the family room to get a snack. And the You know what I mean? Like, yes. that's what I'm used to. So, it's like, yeah. I can imagine coming there now. And I'd be sitting there, you know, with my magic mask on. I'd be like, where's everybody? I'm like, oh, my God. You know, the entire time. <laughs> yeah, again, to the concession stand first. I probably wouldn't be used to that. Uh, yeah, you wouldn't. <laughs> No. You what? And I was like, wow, you know, it's like, yeah, this isn't so bad. You know, because they came to Atlanta and, and uh, played the Atlanta Hawks. Mm-hmm. And and that arena was basically empty, emptier than yeah. what it is now, because I think it was just family, family in the arena. Yes. So it yeah. was really empty then. And that, it, 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 you know, it's like, wow, feels like something's missing. Yeah. The fans. Yeah. You know, yeah. all the excitement. It's like well, a generic... Hope- it was yeah. like a scrimmage game to me. Yeah. And it was preseason, though, but they still feel like scrimmages. <laughs> you know, yeah. just... And they probably will for the next little while, right? I mean, even watching right. on TV now, it's a little weird. But yeah. listen, we got to do what we got to do, right? And keep us protected yeah. until. So yeah. when people talk about your son, they use words such as humility, unselfish, caring, wonderful teammate, etc. <laughs> what words do you use to describe him when you see him on the court? I always, uh, one, I always feel like he's humble. He's a humble player. But deep down inside, he has that fire in him where he wants to win. And he, he, he used to say, I'll do anything to win. I'll do anything to win. I used to have to correct him. Hey, man, don't say you do anything, okay? Yeah. Remember the devil's watching. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to make no, no deals with, with some people that don't, you know what I'm saying? Mean mm-hmm. you no good, if I could say it like that. Right, right. So you just want to keep your head. And I can understand you'll do, say you'll do almost anything to win. Yeah, you know, because he does like to win, you know, and everybody likes to win. Well, who doesn't? But yeah. <laughs> he'll, you know, he'll 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 fight to the end to win, you know. So yeah. he's uh, that's know, just in his blood, right? I mean, he's a true athlete at heart. Exactly, exactly. Well, when my son started doing TV or online interviews, I used to watch them intently and so proudly and as a mom I was always one I always wondered if he was prepared to answer all those questions that they they you know what I mean that they would be asked I, and I know exactly what you mean huh? you know what I mean sometimes those questions are a paragraph long for nothing but uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I would sit there and say oh is he prepared like is he is he ready um when you watch did you coach him, him? Um, we would talk about them, but I mean, a lot of times it was after the fact, right? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, you shouldn't have said that. Or maybe, or next time, you know what I mean? Like you sit up straight and you know what I mean? Show more confidence and you know what I mean? And it's like, it was was great, mom. I'm like, yeah, it was great, but, but there's always a but, right? As a parent, right? And I was, and even now we talk about them. 
Like I was talking to him last night about his interviews and stuff like that. You know what I mean? It's so good for you. Like you had an interview last week and you were talking about this, this, this. You know what I mean? I was so happy for you. You know what I mean? Because you you're different now than you were years ago. And he's like, yeah, Thanks. yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. I see. Now he sees it. So that's all I cared about. Is you know what I mean? Sometimes he'll say to me, yeah, mom, you're right. Like I, I, I see what you were telling me long time ago. And I'm like, I'm glad, mm-hmm. that, you, glad that you retained it. So <laughs> at least. Exactly. So, yeah. When you watch Chuma doing interviews, what goes through your mind? Uh, well, I critique him like you do, okay? <laughs> All in love. But, but when I told him the last interview, I said, man, I said, the next time you schedule an interview, you call me, okay? Just so I could give you some pointers on your presentation, okay? And I, and I told him that, I said, because watching your interviews, you're like monotone. Yeah. You know, you want to add a little energy, a little excitement yeah. to your, you know, interview. So, yeah. so, so step it up a level, you know, as far as smile more, just as something as simple as smiling more. But he, he doesn't see it because he's like, well, I just answer the questions. That's all I do. And I said, <laughs> no. What you're going to realize is that um, if you would just, you know, what you're going to realize, and you probably know, I told him, I said, you probably understand it. Well, you probably know it, but you don't understand it. Yeah. Okay. Your fans are following you and they want to feel that energy from you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So if, if this is the least thing you could do is feel excited and, and try to display some of that energy through your interviews. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe yeah. make a joke, because he is a jokester, but you never know it because <laughs> he's so serious during his interviews. Yeah. You know, open it up a little bit, you know, loosen up a little bit, yeah. you know, during your interviews, you know, because yeah. that way, and what I told him is that I said, that way, people will look forward to interviewing you. Yeah. You know, just think about Muhammad Ali, how those reporters loved interviewing Muhammad Ali. President Obama, they love going to the White House. Yep. You know, they love being around that, that energy. You know, and, and, you know, I'm not saying that you're, you know, exactly like them. I'm just saying that people are attracted to that good energy. And you got a lot of good energy. You know, put it out there. Don't just keep it to yourself. Yeah. You know? No, but it's good for people to see and understand who Juma is, you know what I mean, as a person and not just an athlete. So Exactly. Bring but that I energy. Think, yeah. yeah, I think because he's just so new at it, he's kind of like a little, you know, yeah. shy about it. But once he comes out, they don't realize, hey, he's a real well, nice guy. And I'm sure it's, it's the same of, with your son, you know? Yeah. yeah. You probably My look son, at him and say, show yeah. your real self. Yeah. You know? He's very quiet. He's, you know what I mean? And I'm like, just really talk to them like how you talk to me. Exactly. And then he'll laugh. He's like, nah, nah, I'm not going to do that, ma. I'm like, why not? Like, you know what I mean? Like, show them how funny you are. Like, Same wow. conversation. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I said, they're no different. Yes, show the real you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, so, it'll come in time, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, so, that's what I'm hoping. Yeah, it will. So yeah. you are a mom now of a professional basketball player. So what have you learned so far with this whole process of getting drafted to a basketball organization and what it may or may not entail? What I learned first thing is it's not that complicated. You know, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to one manage your son or make good decisions about your athlete. You know, I I just remember when he was in high school and people were approaching me and talking to me about it, they they try to make me feel like I couldn't do what I do on my own, you mm-hmm. know? And what I'm realizing now is it's not that difficult. It's not that difficult. Right. You know, you know your son better than anybody. Absolutely. You know? So, you know... I believe that some people could step up and then there's some people that really don't want to step up, don't have the time, you know, everybody's situation is different. 
But I think that um, those that can step up should step up to be, to be more involved in the Absolutely. athlete's career. You know, don't just let go. And see, I've never been that type of a parent to let others manage my son, whether it's the coach from high school, middle yes. school, you know what I'm saying? That's Rec. right. I, was, I wasn't one of those moms that would just drop them off and leave and say, I'll be back when practice is over. I was the type that would just stay right there and watch everything. And I feel like, um, you know, some parents feel like that's not their place. That's the coach's place or whatever. But I never really felt like that. Yeah. You know, I felt like um, outsiders try to make you believe that you can't you know, right. do a lot of things for your son. And, and some things like to, to get him drafted 16, I I couldn't, it was out of my hands. I couldn't, you know, the right. only thing I could do was just present them. This is him. Absolutely. You know, so there's, there's some things I could not do, but there's some things that I can do. And that's why I call myself Tuma's m M&M, and mom and manager, because I could pay his bills. You know what I'm saying? I could, I could take care of his business. I've been taking care of his business ever since he was born. Yeah, that's true. So I could manage, and what I don't know, I could find out. Even if it's just Googling whatever it is, I don't know. So I just feel like, um, but you as know, a mom, for those you have that, to. You have Excuse to step me? in. As a parent, you've got to step in, right? At one exactly. point until they're able to 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 do it on their own. I mean, like I say to my son, like, this is your coach, but I'm your head coach. Yep. And he understood that. He was like, okay. You know what I mean? Because my whole point <laughs> to him was, you know, I'm not going to interview in the basketball. What you do on the court is what he tells you to do. Exactly. You know what I mean? But when you're off the court, now you got a whole other coach, right? And the coaches, <laughs> they, they knew and they understood. You know what I mean? Like, oh, hold on a second. They're not going to tell me what my son is going to do. or You know what I mean? Like, exactly. in, in life. Yes. Like give me your suggestions or where you think he should go or what you think he should do, but it 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 starts and stops there. So as a parent, you have to have that that conversation. You have to have that. You know what I mean? That that exactly. There's only the, the rope could only go so far because for me, I wasn't letting people just come in and 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 take over because I when they tried, it was getting to my son's head. You know what I mean? Which is normal. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. He was a kid, and people were telling him a million things, and then they would say to him, "Oh, your mom doesn't know." Huh. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, she, she's just mm-hmm. a mom. She doesn't yep. know. And I'd be like, well, hold on a second. You know, wh- and where did they go to school? What exactly. business school did they go to? Where do they work? You know what exactly. I mean? And, and he'd be like, well, you know, because his friend of a friend of somebody's would say. And then I would laugh and I'd say, okay, well, then my friend of a friend and somebody else's friend said this. <laughs> and then the argument would end because he's like, never mind. <laughs> but my whole point was, I'm your mom. I'm not going to steer you in the wrong way or exactly. the wrong direction. you got to learn to listen. Right. And I tell them all the time, exactly. I'll take the blame. If it's something wrong or whatever, I'll take the full blame. And I think as a parent, you got to get involved and show your kids, you know, this is what it is. And not because I'm your mom and I say so or your dad and I say so, but this is really mm-hmm. the process and include them because it's a business. It's not just a matter of them getting on the on the court and playing. It, it, it really is a business. So they need exactly. to understand and get involved. And you know what I mean? Because at one point they're going to start making a lot of money. And if they don't know how to manage their money, you exactly. know what I mean? it's, it's, yeah, there's going to be a lot of tears. And, and that's what I had to get to me also to understand. Okay, now that you've crossed over, understand this is a business, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you're going to be playing a game, but this is still a business. And and I'm going to be making the business decisions, right. you know? And I'm not just going to, you know, rely on my own laurels when I don't know. I'm going to have enough sense to go find out what I don't know to make Absolutely. the best decision. Absolutely. And I always present it with him, whatever decisions I make. I always present it with him. Say, hey, are you okay with this? Are you okay with that? I think yeah. it's a good thing. He, he, he follows me. He follows my lead. Absolutely. You know, like a good son does. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I just, you know what? I've heard so many battles between parents and agents and stuff yeah. like that. I didn't want to go there. Yeah. You know, I didn't want to get into to any kind of scenarios where it's a tug of war for my son, you know? So I always try to keep our circle small. When it came to looking for agents, I told my my older son, Chuka, I told him, hey, people are calling, you know, you talk to them. I don't want to talk to them. 
you you go through the process of elimination and you send me the three ones, three agents that you think are that you like, you know, and then I'll talk to them. But I'm not talking to everybody. Every yeah. time Dick and Harry is calling with all these yeah. promises and all this other stuff. Nah, uh-uh. I ain't going through that. It's Just true. send me who you think I would like. Like what agent is going to say, I have, I'm not that good and I'm going to do nothing for your son. When they call you, they're all the best agent in the planet. They all got all kinds of, like you said, bells and whistles, and they could do everything for your son, mm-hmm. right? So it is hard to weed it out. And sometimes, you know what I mean, the wrong decisions are made, but you'll only know that after they, after they are. Yeah. You know what I mean? You just live by your yeah. decision and you make it work. And that's all you can do as a parent, right? Exactly. And, and, and I've heard all the stories, and I learned from all those stories from the parents, yeah. you know? I just Absolutely. try to avoid all the horror stories, you know? <laughs> but, um, so, yeah, you know, all this is new to us, right. you know? Yes. You, you know, especially the single moms that, you know, just trying to muddle their way through all of the stuff that's going on. And, you know, and everybody's telling us different stories, right. you know? And, you know, so we have to, you know... Relying on uh, our woman's intuition, for one thing. You got to do what you got to do for your babies, right? So Chuma said that he believes that he uh, got his hard work ethic from you as he remembers watching you work two jobs so you can support your family. Mm -hmm. So how do you react knowing that your sacrifices are appreciated and carried through by your kid? You You know, I am so happy that Chuma... All of the sacrifices that I've made, and to me, they really weren't sacrifices because I always enjoyed it. I enjoyed taking them to the game, to the park, and, you know, I, I enjoyed every bit of it. But the one thing that I really love about Chuma being able to live his dream is the fact that only 20% of the population like what they do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Most people don't like what they do. And I applaud anybody that loves what they do and yeah. likes their job, you know? Because a lot of folks, me included, I was in accounting and I, I, I hated it. I hated it. But I, I, I understand where God was taking me with it, you know, with the accounting. Right. Because I did learn. To be more analytical. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Watch the money. You know? So I know there was a purpose for me. The reason why I didn't like accounting is because I thought I always looked at myself as a humanitarian. I always wanted to go out and help people, right. be out there in the community and you know, yeah. Try to uplift people and stuff like that. Sitting in an office looking at a screen all day at numbers, that just was boring to me. Yeah. But I see there's a reason for that, you know? And uh it was basically for for what's happening now with Chuma. Yeah, yeah, now absolutely. I feel more comfortable watching his finances, you know, directing his ways, helping him make his you know decisions and so on. So it, so I'm happy. I'm happy that he's happy doing what he loves. Yeah, you know. So Chuma has recently experienced uh, an injury to his knee a few days ago. So first, how is he mm-hmm. recovering? He's he, he's he's recovering okay, you know. Lando, they're they're working with him, and um, I've been talking to his agent Richie, and uh, we're going to we're trying to plan a trip to see a specialist in New York who works for a basically a, a um, what's the name of that hospital where they specialize in bone surgery and stuff like that Mm -hmm. and knee ligaments and all that other stuff. We just want to make sure. So he's okay. He said it doesn't hurt. He's just icing up. It's just, you know, he has a bone bruise. And basically it's that whole rice routine, rest, ice, compression, you know. So he's just working with that. They expect him to be out for about five to six weeks. Okay. But meanwhile, the agent wants to be proactive and take him to see the specialist. But one, so we could get a second opinion to make sure, you know, 
that it is what we think it is, and to basically get his opinion on the diet that he needs to help with his healing process and the um, the rehab. Yeah. You know, we want to make sure that we're doing the right thing in Orlando. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's all. Well, Just checking and double checking. You got to do making what you sure. Do. And the season is young, right? Exactly. Just, just exactly. started. So, um, yeah. well, we have a few magic players right now who are injured. Let me just get my lists just so I don't forget I anybody. So we're starting with your baby. Then mm-hmm. we got Jonathan Isaac, Evan Fournier, Michael Carter Williams, um, Al Farouk Aminu, Aaron Gordon, and recently Markel Fultz. Some injuries. That broke my heart when I saw I know, Markel. Me too. Only because Girl, I was like, not know. again. I know. But I yeah. know. God bless him. And some injuries are day to day, and others are indefinite, right? Um, right. But I believe that you and I, as Christian women, we need to to put our prayers up um, for those men. And for me, well, I mean, for you too. We got to ask God for healing and restoration. You know what I mean for these, right. for these for these guys, so they can get back to work, like as as quickly as possible, and live out their dreams. Amen. Amen. And I told Amen. you, I said that's what you need to do. You need to one get prayed up. You know, focus on healing, you know, because, you know, God is a healer. So he understands that, yeah. you yeah. know, and this is, again, another setback, but you're going to be OK. Yeah. You know, a bone bruise, you'll be fine. He'll be fine. So you just, you know, keep the faith and do it, you know, do what you're supposed to do. Keep that ice on there and rest, right. elevate, you know. So he, he he's OK. He's good with it, you know. But he was like, Mom, as soon as I was getting my game on. I said, yeah, I know I saw you. But you know what? This two shall pass again. We're going to get through this. They will pass. And it will pass. Uh-huh. Like you said, you got five, six weeks. That's OK. Just yeah, let them rest exactly. up. And you know what I mean? And uh-huh. we're, we're waiting for him and the others to come back, right? Right, right. So, we were just so happy it wasn't his ACL. Right. Yeah. That's where we were overjoyed. Yeah. You know. Oh, bone bruise, that's all? Okay, yeah, we, we can beat yeah. this. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's good. So, so he's, he's good. let's learn some fun facts about Chuma. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is that go-to dish that you make that he absolutely loves? He loves my hash browns. He loves my hash browns. It's like a Caribbean-flavored hash brown with bell pepper, onions, fried crispy. He loves that. Okay. Uh-huh. I'm, listening for, I'm listening for some recipes. Okay, okay. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> what was one item as a child that he just could not live without? Other than the basketball? I was just going to say other than the basketball. <laughs> ba- what, really? Basketball is number one and football is yeah. number two. Oh, amen. Amen. Yeah, he was he was top wide receiver in Georgia when he played rec ball. Yeah, okay. he was good. Yeah. My son too. So oh, awesome. see, see. Yes, yes. Chuma and Kevin are gonna have some conversations. <laughs> exactly. Go out there and throw some footballs for, you know. I tell you. By the way, my son, I was listening to an interview uh, just this morning, and Kem had said that Chuma is one of the best defenders um, that he knows. So I thought it was just awesome that, that you know oh, what I really? mean, that he's talking about his own, uh, yeah, I thought it was oh, just great. Wonderful, I it was just great. wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> so did you have a childhood nickname for him? And if you did, what was it? Sometimes I call him Chew. Just chew. Actually, know. let's talk about his name, Chuma. What is that? You know, <laughs> what is his full name? Uh, his full name is Chikuma Julian Okiki, and um, it's Nigerian. Chikuma's mm-hmm. Nigerian. Yeah. Julian was my grandfather's name, a New Yorker, and uh, you know, Okiki is Ibu. In Nigeria. Right. So he, uh, yeah, he, he's good with it, you know. Well, I was looking up, like I was saying to you the other day, his name, and it's God knows. Love, and you know what? Love, he love he, he takes pride in that. As he know, should. With his spirituality and everything. Mm-hmm. He, you know, and I was like, good. My husband named him, you know, because I didn't know. 
you know, he had to educate me. But uh, so he, he's good with that. He takes pride in that name where when he was in elementary school, you know, when they would call roll, oh, the kids used to have a field day with his name, you know. Chuma, Chuma, what's Chuma? Oh, Kiki. And so he used to tell the uh, the teacher, please just say my first name. Don't say my last name. Oh, you know? that's cute. That's okay. I said, they'll get used to it. Yeah. They'll get used to it. Well, they're saying it now. So Exactly. <laughs> that's what I told them. I said, yeah, they just, just, it's just something new for them, but they'll Absolutely. get used to it. And that's Absolutely. what I told them now. Yeah, they're used to it now. Yeah, there you oh, go. Oh, good. They're loving it yeah. now. Uh-huh. So now we want some tips and advice for our listeners. What three tips would you give a mom who has to deal with a coaching decision that she did not agree with? Mm, well, I would definitely tell him. You know what I'm saying? I would tell him that I would ask him, why did he make that decision? First of all, you know, and, uh, I would tell them, you know, if it's justified that I didn't agree with it because uh, it didn't it didn't benefit not only my son, but the team, you know, why would you do that? And and, you know, it didn't benefit anybody, you know, and believe me, let me tell you, I had a couple of quite a few. Well, I usually don't get involved with the coach's decisions. But the only time I'll really speak out about anything when I think it is just totally absurd right. what the coach right. did, you know, like if he if he just um, totally disrespected a situation, a referee or a player or something like that, you know. I really didn't have too many problems with Chuma's coaches because they always loved him, you know? So I never, I just always just sit back and watch. But if I saw something, I was going to speak on it. And usually it wasn't about Chuma, it was about something else. Right. You know? Right. It was about something else that I saw, you know, because sometimes some coaches are worse, sore losers than the the players. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's true. So, what know. advice would you give to a player about how to deal with a tough teammate? A tough team? Well, you know, I just, uh, I just say push through it. You know, yeah. Just do your best to show the good side of you. I wanted to say a Christian, but it might not be a Christian. It might be a Muslim. I don't know. Yeah. But the best yeah. side of them, you know, and uh, and I believe they'll come around. And if they don't come around, then just know your place, you know? And and know your place, meaning you ain't got to hang with them. You know, you, you, you place yourself with people that are receptive to you, yeah. you know? And if somebody's not feeling you, just, you know, just go with the folks that are feeling with you, yeah, the guys true. that are, you know? Yeah. Shoot. If you could give only one piece of advice to another courtside mom, what would it be? One is do your homework. Do your homework, you know? And uh, and patience is a virtue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, got to have patience Amen. dealing with all that's going on. You know, with the athlete, whoever it is, you know, it's football, basketball, you know, things aren't always going to go your way or the way you like them. But uh, if you do your homework, you'll you'll see that you'll get to feel whether or not you're justified, Mm -hmm. you know, your argument, your opinion, you know, and you might find out that it's not, you know, or you might find find that you you are justified, you know, but. but you got to do your homework and it could just mean talking to other parents to find out what you need to know, you know, simple as that. You know, this is why I do this show. Not only do I want the public to understand what the parents or the moms, you know what I mean? How we raise professional athletes and what we go through, but you know what I mean? It's the flip side as well. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? For me, 
my son's still in the league, right? So when I listen to moms like you, you know, like yourself, I, I listen and I learn. You know what I mean? Every episode, I learn something different. I learn something new. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay, I think this would be great for my son to, you know what I mean? Or I'll mention it to him. Hey, you know, this player so-and-so, this is what he did or this is what he does now. What do you think about that? And we'll talk about it. You know what I mean? Because it's important. You got to learn, right? You, mm-hmm. I, I believe experience is the best teacher. And if you're telling me as a mom, this is what Chuma did, you know what I mean? And it works. Hey, it may work for Kim as well. So with that exactly. said, I thank you so much. Number one for coming on the show two for rocking that jersey <laughs> yeah. well, I, you know i'm gonna thank richie for giving me this thing this is a bling bling shiny shiny look like it's got yeah. all the shine in it you look like one of the dancers you look like one of the dancers uh-huh see yeah i love it but thank you yeah it's awesome it looks awesome on you and you know what i just can't wait for you and I to sit there in the Amway Center and just cheer on our boys and just just be magic moms like we are. Exactly. That's it. And you know what? Before we go, my son said to me uh, yesterday, he says, you know, I love how you're, you're meshing a lot with the moms. I love how you're getting to know the moms. And I was yes. telling him today that I was um, going to be speaking with you. And he was so happy. You know what I mean? Yes. I was telling him, I want to do Magic Mom Month, and I'm going to do this mom, this mom, this mom. And he was so happy this morning. And he's like, that is absolutely great. It sounds like he's very proud of you, Mom. He's proud yeah. of everything that you're doing. Yeah, and that's a good like thing. It. Yeah, know? it is. It is. So, it is. Yeah. yeah, he likes me sometimes. So he makes you proud, <laughs> and you're making him proud. That's a good yeah. thing. Yay, I applaud you. There you go. There uh-huh. you go. But Renee, God bless you. Sending you blessings, man. You just This was a, a great, great talk. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you coming on the show. I'm actually, you know what? You reached out to us a couple of months ago, so I really appreciate that because yes. to me that shows that you see the value in what we're trying to do, right? So Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. So yes. love and you thank for you that. for having me. I appreciate it. Absolutely. It's great meeting you. Great meeting you too, and I'll be texting you later during the game. <laughs> All right. Yes. Go, go Magic. Uh-huh. That's what makes it more exciting, the texting yeah. tail back and forth. It does. Yeah. It does. I don't uh-huh. care if we win or lose. I'm still texting. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You take care. Thank you. You too, Renee. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in, guys. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Courtside Moms and make sure you subscribe to the podcast.